The Kingroom KP3S is a 3D printer that I had seen online for some time, but I initially didn't really think much of it. Earlier this year, there was a conversation in the ModBot Army Discord where a couple of members were speaking very highly of this printer, both in a relatively stock state and completely modded. Coincidentally, Kingroom reached out to me around that time asking if I was interested in playing around with the KP3S. I agreed, but at the time had planned on using it for a project video or two and wasn't going to be dedicating an entire video to it. Well, it's been about four months since we did the live stream unboxing of this sub $200 3D printer, and it's really won me over. In today's video, we'll take a look at the specs of the KP3S and what my experience has been so far, as well as the mods I have done to it and what my future plans are for this printer. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. I quickly wanted to mention something I am super excited about. We officially have brand new ModBot merch. It's something that we had quite a long time ago and then not a whole lot happened with it. I wasn't entirely happy with the quality, but I've had a handful of people reaching out asking if there is any merch. And so I had this very awesome, what I'm calling spool bus design created. And if you are interested in supporting the channel or picking up one of these awesome shirts, links will be down below in the description where you can do so. Like we typically do, let's first run through the specs. The KP3S is a cantilever style 3D printer with a build volume of 180 millimeters cubed. It's constructed of 2040 aluminum extrusions for the Z axis, a steel arm for the X axis, and a fairly thin steel base. For being a small cantilever style 3D printer, I was quite surprised by the rigidity of the arm, even when comparing it to my Prusa Mini. For motion, the X and Y axis are using linear rails, which is not something commonly found on budget 3D printers, and the Z axis is using your much more traditional or common roller wheels. I do wish they had gone with linear rails also for the Z axis, but having them on the Y and the X, which is going to be where the most quick or rapid movements are happening, does keep the machine pretty stiff. The extruder is a direct drive Titan style extruder and the hot end is PTFE lined and kind of reminds me of a shorter E3D V6. The block looks very similar to a V6, but the heatsink is definitely shorter. The tool head has one cooling fan for the hot end and one layer cooling fan. The bed comes with a magnetic flex plate system and has sort of that knockoff build tack style sheet. It worked okay for a bit, but the magnet on it was incredibly weak. So once I blew through the build surface from printing on it, I swapped it out for a stronger magnet and a powder coated PEI bed. Kingroom does also have their own branded PEX uh, smooth PEI sheet. So they do have upgrade options now and that magnet that comes with that upgrade kit is definitely stronger than the one that comes stock on this machine. Leveling is manual using four fairly large knobs but Kingroom does also sell an auto bed leveling upgrade kit. The springs are actually fairly stiff and in the four months I've had this machine, I think I leveled it the initial time and maybe one other time. I really haven't had to tweak the bed since I got it set correctly. As far as connectivity goes, you can print over USB or using a micro SD card and the included 2.8 inch touchscreen. The screen is definitely on the smaller side, but quite responsive and it worked fine for interfacing with this printer until I flashed Clipper over to the printer. It is a 24 volt system and the power supply is separate from the 3D printer. This is something that you're probably either going to love or hate. Initially, I was kind of indifferent about it, but there are some pros of this. One, I don't really move my printers around all that much unless I'm doing some sort of video content with them. And having the power supply separate is sort of an ideal situation if you are planning on enclosing this printer for doing something like printing with ABS. Underneath the printer, there is a 32-bit board labeled KP3 version 1.3 with TMC2225 drivers. The MCU on mine was a GD32 F303, but I've heard of some of the 1.3 boards coming with STM32 F103 chips. There are a handful of open ports for add-ons as well as an intake fan mounted to the inside of the case. Setup was done entirely live over on the ModBot Army channel. If you're interested in checking out the unboxing and setup, that will be linked in the description. And the process was very simple. It was essentially attaching this Z arm with the X uh, X arm to the base with just a couple of screws and you're ready to go and print. Instead of printing anything that was pre-sliced on stream, we hopped into the latest version of Cura where there is a built-in profile for the KP3S and we sliced up a CaliCat, which turned out great. I've since switched over to exclusively using Super Slicer with the KP3S. I used the KP3S completely stock for the first month to month and a half and it actually made an appearance in the 
bed leveling video using Chuck's bed leveling device, as well as the video on setting the printer's XY offsets in your slicer. The initial plan was to install Clipper on the KP3S, and after quite a bit of trial and error, I was actually able to get Clipper to install on this old Windows tablet. I have a handful of these that were headed to the e-recycling facility, and I was able to get about 10 of them, and they run Clipper great, and on top of that, I was able to figure out how to run Clipper while also having it run Clipper screen. So I've been using this massive touchscreen to interface with the printer, which is probably overkill, uh, definitely overkill. And the game plan is that I'll eventually make some sort of an enclosure for this and just mount the tablet on the outside of the enclosure so that way I can interface with the printer like that instead of having this large tablet sitting on the work surface. But it's been working great. Clipper screen's been awesome and I've had no issues running Clipper and everything along Clipper just from using this tablet. These tablets didn't come with batteries, so I actually hooked them up, uh, soldered directly wires to the inside of the tablet, and I have them running through a five volt buck converter. So the tablet is 100% powered off of the printer's PSU. With Clipper on the printer, I set the acceleration to 3000 and went from fairly conservative speeds to having it run between 100 to 150 millimeters per second for all of the prints. Since the printer was now wireless, I put it out in the garage and used it to prototype about probably 20 different variations of my CNC machines dust shoe. Here's some of the ones that I still have and I used it for everything, all the different small rings when I was test fitting, how it would fit on the spindle or how it would fit on the uh, vacuum hose. The KP3S has a fairly compact footprint, but at 180 millimeters cubed, that's a really good size for me to be able to use it for a ton of the functional 3D printing that I would need. On about the 10th iteration of these dust shoes, I did have a pretty crazy layer shift, and upon investigation, noticed that the Y belt was very loose. I unscrewed the bottom of the printer and saw that the belt or the zip tie holding the belt's tension in place had come loose, and so I snipped that zip tie and just pulled the belt tight and attached a uh, a new zip tie to it and it was back up and printing. It definitely could use a slightly better belt system and something like belt tensioners would also be awesome to have. I did print a handful of other things on the KP3S. Some of the stuff didn't actually make the journey with me from a house in California to where we're at now in Idaho. Uh, but the primary things I was printing on this was PLA with a little bit of PETG. I enjoyed using the KP3S stock, but I really fell in love with the KP3S once I installed Clipper on it. The linear rails on both the X and Y axis paired with that direct drive Titan style extruder really allow this machine to boogie. The KP3S is definitely not perfect and I would love to have a Z-axis linear rail, belt tensioners, and some additional cooling, but at roughly $180, I feel like it is a really good value can perform as is and is a very solid base if you are wanting to upgrade and mod this printer. If you're looking for a fun small printer that you can just throw prints at, the KP3S has really surprised me in its sort of consistency and just ability to continuously chuck prints at it. If you prefer to mod your machine, the KP3S has a surprisingly large community for modding. I believe the original KP3S came out in 2020 and it's gone through some iterations. The initial one definitely did not have the Titan style extruder. It had more of your standard, um, the standard red metal extruder that you would see on something like a Creality style printer. So there are a ton of mods available out there, everything from larger screens, Z-axis linear rails. There's a mod where you can put the power supply underneath the printer and raise it up so it gets a base. And there is a host of different tool head options. Other than installing Clipper and the powder coated PEI bed, I had not planned on doing any other upgrades, but I recently stumbled across Squirrel F3D's tool head that has a Orbiter V2 and the brand new drop effect XG Hotten, which is exactly what I have waiting to be installed. With how much I've enjoyed using this 3D printer, I decided that I actually am going to be giving it a facelift, and this is probably some mod that we will end up doing over on the ModBot Army channel. With how much I've enjoyed using this 3D printer as is, I'm excited to add some of these mods to it and just see how far I can push this small printer. And that has been the King Room KP3S. I hope I was able to answer the majority of your questions and give you some information about the machine, hopefully help you decide whether this is something that you are going to be wanting. I know there is quite a large KP3S community out there and it's I've been posting a bunch of like small videos of this thing just printing really quickly on Twitter and the feedback I primarily have been getting has been super positive from other owners of this machine. So if you are someone that has a KP3S, whether it's stock or not stock, also let me know in the comments down below and 
what your experience has been like. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.